This week on the 77% Street Debate. As a woman being on the street, you don't see yourself anymore as a human being. You just see yourself as an object, as an object on sale. There is the juju right, there are the parents pressure, there are the madam threatening her. If I have something, I have a girlfriend, and I have to send my girlfriend to go work outside to feed me, to pay my house rent, to close me and slave her. Who am I? I'm an, the first animal created by God. The 77% is in Italy, and we're here to get the story of the slave trade of women from Africa. Over the last three years, 20,000 women, all of them Nigerian, many of them minors, have arrived in Italy via the Mediterranean Sea. The United Nations says 80% of them, get that number again, 80% of them are victims of trafficking or are in danger of falling into the hands of victims. We're going to be hearing first from two women who know that story all too well. Princess, I'm going to come to you first. How did you land up in Italy? I came to Italy through a woman who was a madam in Italy. She was a, a human trafficker. She came to my states and ate in my restaurant because I was a chef. And after eating, she proposed to me that I cook very well and invited me to a state in a door state and also promised me that if I would like to go to Italy, she would sponsor me mm. and I would be able to work in an Italian restaurant as a good chef. And by then I did not know anything about human trafficking in prostitution um, states. And they bought me in Mutala Mohammed Airport uh, with the visa and passport of an, a British um, daughter. Right. And when we got to Turin, they sold me out to one of the youngest madam who just finished paying her debt. She was an ex-victim of human trafficking also. Right. That was how I was uh, sold as a slave in the areas of uh, prostitution. And she forced me into sex trade in Turin. Talk to us about how a typical day was like for you? Were you spending day and night on the streets? What was life like as a sex worker in Italy when you arrived? Really, it was awful. I could still remember the first day they took me to the road called um, Corso Margarita. I met a lot of women half naked and I started crying and I started praying. I was so confused. It was awful in the streets. I took a lot of um, threats from the customers, some of the wicked ones beaten up. I got a stab of the knife. I also got the gun uh, threats. You had gone from having a business in Nigeria. You were cooking, you had your restaurant. You were now a sex worker in Europe. How were you able to, to do that? How were you able to shift your mindset to carry out the work that was expected of you? Yeah, it's happened because of the threats. And one of the threats was that they would kill me or my son that they knew. And then I couldn't know anyone that I could ask for help, especially because of the language barrier that I got involved with one of the clans that, uh, that knew how to speak uh, English. Then I were able to express myself mm -hmm. that I am not a prostitute, I am not a sex worker really yeah. but I am a slave. Okay that's Princess's story. Blessing I'm going to come over to you and start right at the same place as I did with Princess. How did you land up in Italy? When I was in Nigeria I was not ignorant of the existence of trafficking because I was in Bene. There are a lot of programs against human trafficking going on but when these women approached me and told me about this possibility of going to, to Europe to work in the brother shop. And when I saw what she said I would be paid, uh, it was very, very encouraging. Then I spoke it out with my friend, I talked it out with my parents. Then I saw it just like as a favor. I've heard a lot of story, but this woman, the first thing she told me was, we are going to process the visa, you are going for interview. I went for a job interview, I submit my curriculum. And everything went so fine. I had no no doubt. No reason to be suspicious. No, no doubt. I was not just really suspicious of, of 
of the contrary. When I arrived in Italy, I, I can remember I arrived on Sunday. Then the evening of it, they told me, they told me to drop everything, everything that was heavy with me, my purse, my documents, they collected everything. Then after collecting everything, they told me that I was indebted with the sum of 65,000 euros. 65,000 euros. But I was expecting to be paid. Then why should I pay the sum of, of 65,000 euros? Then, but the way the man was talking, immediately I understood that I have fallen into the hands of traffickers. And because I, I have very lot of, a lot of stories of so many victims, right. I know many of them that get tortured. I have heard the story of so many of them that, that we are evil kids. Then I was really frightened. Right. I was afraid. I was really traumatized. Mm. Then they told me I was going to the road immediately. I had no phone on me. I had nothing on me. Uh, I went to the street. I met other girls. But I could not really keep quiet that very evening. I kept on asking questions mm. like, why are we here? Is there no way of exit? You see, many of them, they were like, are you not afraid? All these people, they are dangerous. Dangerous as how? Yeah. Blessing, talk to us about how you were able to, to follow through with that. You, you, you thought you were coming to work in a computer repair shop. Now you have to work on the street. How were you able to do that with, with a clear mind? I don't think that there is any girl. I don't think that there is any girl that will come to Italy that will tell you that she is walking on the road with a clear mind. Because you see many of them, they are crying. Do you know what it means to give up yourself to a man that you never know? Do you know what it means as a woman to move with more than one man a day? The thing, getting to the road with the way things were, I could not keep shit. I, can, I could remember vividly when I asked, can we not report this to the police? What are the Italian government doing about it? Because you can see that the rate, the demand curve is very, very high. And that is why the supply curve is also high. Then what are we going to do to shift down the demand and the supply? Because if there is no demand, there won't be supply. Because it's so annoying and so heartbroken that many girls waste their future, their dignity, their life on the street because there are so many people that want to buy sales because there is an institution, there is a government that have their eyes yeah. closed to the dehumanization yeah. of so many women What was on taken the from you? What was taken away then from you? Then I believe that that very moment, I felt that I was robbed of my dignity. I was angry. I was traumatized. I was despaired. Then because of this, I decided I felt just dead because it's what is not what I dreamt of. Because it's not the reason why I studied. It wasn't my hope. It wasn't my aspirations. Then this was the reason why I decided to search for the police station to make reports. It's not easy to open up yeah. about these things, but what is the reality when you get here? You and the other girls on the streets, tell us about being on the streets. What happens there? As a woman, as a woman being on the streets, you don't see yourself anymore as a human being. You just see yourself as an object, as an object on sale. Mm. Because the trafficker see you as a product with mm. which to make money and the clients, they see you as a product that they need to buy to satisfy their pleasure. Mm. Then you don't, you don't feel human anymore because all you talk about is how to raise that money, your debt for the traffickers. All you talk about is how to make yourself just beautiful for any client so that you can, you are just as party right. for that day, right. for that freedom, that freedom that never really comes up. Because okay. when you when you you don't really know when you finish your debt because it's the traffickers that that keep records 
you don't keep your records doesn't matter to them okay. they are the one that made the decision whether you have you are done whether right. they want to liberate you you don't really know when then how how can a girl just you know you are in such a state such a condition right. and nobody will care to ask you why are you here well i would like to underline from my perspective of prosecutor that the two story you have been told are not just story um, I have faced more than hundreds of cases of human trafficking and there's a like a trick mirror because all the girls are told they will work as waitress they will work as hairdressers or as uh, um, saleswomen they look at the Facebook and see all the pictures of their friends who are in Europe and they see winning pictures and all the traffickers uh, approach is um, friendly, is I will take care of you, I do not have to uh, think about nothing, I will provide to you a right. home, a house, a work, but there are not good Samaritan, no one. They are just looking for a source of income. Right. So this is to underline, this is not just two story. This, this is, is this, the same story all the time. Okay. And what is also uh, the same story in a way, and I'll come to you, Maria, is the fact that most of the women on the streets of Italy who are being sold as sex slaves come from one state in Nigeria. I think the number is 94% according to the International Organization for Migration. 94% of these women come from Edo State. You're researching this. Why would that be the case? Edo State has a big history. Uh, of migration that started I think in 80s when there were quite some Italians present on the ground working in some industries and who married Nigerian women it's a narrative that is going around <laughs> uh, and what happened is that uh, a lot of them yeah brought their wives to Europe and uh, what they did is started the business it's one reason the second reason there is a lot of uh, mystic things involved in Edo it's a very interesting community it's a community that has a long history it has a lot of ways to of and uh, possibilities of manipulation, I think. Are uh, oh, you talking about black magic? Yeah, although it's present in everyday life of uh, Nigerian people, it's not something specific to their community, but in, right. in Edo it's very strong. And the third reason is a dream. And when you have more of your girlfriends going around and then uh, coming back in beautiful clothes or you see them, then you want to do the same. Thanks for that. Francesco, I'm going to come to you now um, because you, are, you work in law enforcement. Your job is to, to catch the people. One of the things uh, that we know is that, and we heard from Princess and Blessing, is that they don't report. The victims don't come and report. Yes, it's very important that the victims are, uh, came to, to us to, to tell their stories because uh, uh, they need to trust uh, in uh, our uh, in our system, in our government, in our uh, law enforcement, um, they need to trust uh, to the right person when they arrive here in, in Italy. Okay, we, we sorry, we're going to go over to, to Blessing because she wants to weigh in on, on that specific. When you're talking about the fear of the victims, why is it that the victims do not trust the players? You have to know that many of these girls, they are from vulnerable families. Okay. They are from a very poor background. This is what made them to be vulnerable in the first place. And this is why they are afraid. And secondly, they, and they do not have any idea about the juridical system in Italy. Okay. They do not have any idea about the fact that the police will work for your freedom, we work for your protection, we right. work for your security, okay. because it does not exist in Nigeria context. Okay, I'm gonna come to you, Lina. I have a question, but say what you need to say first and then I'll follow up with my question. We do know that victims of human trafficking are victims less willing to cooperate. We don't uh, stay there and waiting for a report because we know there is the juju rights, there are the parents' pressure, there are the madam threatening her, there are several reasons, and there's also a quite strange ambivalence of the victims. On one side, she hates the madam. On the other side, she feels gratitude because the madam is the person who made them come to Europe. Right. What are we going to do? In Catania, for example, we built a net working all together. The ONG, the anti-trafficking ONG, the legal guardian, the juvenile court, the IOM Fidesper, the police officer, working together, building investigation without a witness statement. Okay. So right. that's quite important. And we, this kind of 
system, the, this kind of uh, way to combat human trafficking has been really successful. Okay, yeah. I'll come back to you about the Juju rights because I'm interested to know about how that whole thing works. But Samson, weigh in here. First of all, I want to say, um, um, I want to chip into the question you asked them, uh, Mr. Francesco. Francesco. Yeah. The, the difficulties is this. One is the language barrier. Two, in Africa, where we came from, we don't have, we, we, it's not a society. When you have a problem with somebody, you go to tell the police. Three, fear. Because one, the madam is there threatening that if you're going to report, the police are going to arrest you. You don't have a document, they are going to deport you. He's threatening right. Right. that if you report me, I will kill your mother, okay. I will kill your brother, I will destroy you, you swear, voodoo. So the whole thing, we create a kind of an earthquake to that very individual mind. He became confused. Okay, you talked about voodoo. I'm going to come back to you because explain to us this voodoo ceremony that takes place and how it, it plays into the fear that women have in running away and escaping from this trafficking situation. Naturally, a voodoo was made for the blessings of the land and for the cause of your enemies. It only functions psychologically when you have the belief or when you are afraid of something because the Bible says that fear is a sin before God. So the most important part today is that we need to take away the fear from the victims in order for her to come out, out of despair. Without getting out the fear, the victim might not be able to come right. out. Then secondly, I want to talk about Mr. Francesco, because most of the victims normally um, denounce their traffickers, but the delay on the sector of these people uh, is too much. Okay, so I'm going to come to you, Lena, because here's somebody saying some victims do. They come and they report, but it takes so long, the process. Uh, I don't know. In my office, this doesn't happen. In a few months, we are able to arrest. We have been arrested so many people, more than 100 in the last years. Mm. In 2018, we had um, a conviction for 100 98 years of imprisonment for many traffickers. Okay. So uh, it sounds strange to me because in, it is something that I don't know. In my office, we are really fast right. and we are able to build investigation without the witness statement. The witness, the, sta the, um, the victims is uh, questioned right. just when the, all the traffickers have been arrested. So she feels safe. She is uh, um, also responsible because she mm. knows that she can lie, she can be silent, or she can tell the truth. But the traffickers will remain in prison. So that's very important for her. Francesco, you wanted to weigh in and I will be back yes, to you. Uh, I'd like to add uh, something. First of all, we put under protection the victim. Right. So the, she is out of the uh, power of, the, their, uh, of uh, her madam. Yes. Okay. First of all, so when uh, she started to co cooperation with us, she is under protection. Immediately. After that, the, we can try to do our best with the prosecutor okay. to try to arrest the madame, the traffickers. Okay, okay. I'm going to come back to you now because we're, we're, let's try and think about the solutions. One of the things you spoke about earlier was the fact that there is demand and supply. We've been told that the state that you come from, its main export is its women, like you. Talk to us about that and why that needs to change before we can stop seeing women coming here and being put in the position you were put into. I, be, I believe that busy economies will tell you that a reduction in demand will lead to reduction in supply as well. Because I believe that the European Union need to be truthful and they need to do the right thing. But from it's the, not the European poor, Union sending from, Nigerian women to, to Italy. From, so allow let's me, talk allow about me to talk. The legalizing prostitution, what does that mean? Legalizing a vital part of a woman to be a task painter. But we heard Princess say that this isn't prostitution, that this is slave trade. Yeah, but when you legalize prostitution, the trafficker, they are very, very, they are very, very intelligent. They are very, very intelligent. You legalize prostitution, they, okay, they I'm make gonna, Hang on a second. I think you, yeah, let's, let's go back. Sorry. But I want to talk about this, this vulnerable part of the world because I'm not satisfied with the idea that the only solution is from a European law perspective. You have been on the ground. You are going home to Nigeria. You're speaking to young women there. Tell me about what you're telling them 
so that they don't come here and land up in the position you found yourself in. And uh, we uh, organize this, like, seminars in the churches, in the University of Benin, uh, to talk about the risk of human trafficking and to uh, share my experiences as one of the victims and educate the young ones to follow up their education and also educate the right. mothers to take care of the school fees of their daughters. So that they don't send so their daughters. So that they will not send their daughters. Right, we'll come to you. If in a, particular, in, a, in a particular society, if the government does not do what, does not provide a need for the people, and what she said, when they say, uh, you see um, a, a girl that right. is here, that is uh, after one year or two years, putting fine feature, making fine hair, you know, they thought that Europe is what? It's all. They but think it looks like what you look yeah, like yeah. now. But and in, Princess in you. In reality, in the reality, it's not so. Right. Because, uh, wait, let me finish, let me finish. Because you see these guys, there is none of them that can stand publicly and say, I'm a prostitute. That is what, that is what, that is the, the, the lack. Because they don't want to, that is why you see, it is very hard for the, even, the, the connection between the Italian right. government and the European government with the help of the Nigerian government to battle it. Because no, no, no daughter want to say to his family that he's a prostitute yet. No. Okay, exactly. Blessing, I want to come back to you because we know that the Oba uh, from the state that you come from, uh, he cursed this juju ritual that many young women have to undergo uh, coming over here. That is a big part of how traffickers are able to keep women enslaved. The threat of the juju curse if you run away and don't honor what you're meant to do. Do you see that as something that is effective? Yes, the Oba has, uh, has exercised uh, his duty as a monarch, but it's, it's so unfortunately that Bini is just one of the local government, like the Bini is one of the city in 17, 18 local government in the state. All these other people, they remain victim because it's not effective to that yes. side. Right, I must go, we soon have to wrap up. Lina, I'll come to you and then I want to talk about solutions. Yes, regarding to the Oba edict, it was an historical moment for everyone like me, princess, and blessing working in the field of human trafficking because when we all heard about this edict, we were wondering, now everything is going to hand Unfortunately, I can confirm every single word that Blessing said. The madam, the traffickers, uh, made some interpretation of the Oba edict. For example, um, this edict will work for the future. If you have undergone, have been undergone a juju right, he is still, it is he's still working. And on the other hand, one of the problems, the girls that felt free from the hoat, decided sometimes to leave the protection right. system and they get exploited for them boyfriend. That's the problem of the gender okay. basis. So we problem. know that the... the, the when, when does that happen? Yeah. Because uh, when the Elba revoked the oath, okay. uh, at that particular time that this announcement, many girls left the madams, many girls fled away. But there was no place for them to go. There were no place. So some right. of them become victims to boyfriends, some guys that pick them in the train station. Right. Yeah. right. Sorry, we're running out of time, so let's go quickly. There's something I want to see. Listing. And talk about the solutions while you're here, because yeah. now we need to find we, a solution to this. How do we end trafficking? Yes. It can end between we the people, we the young Nigerians, we young Africa, that way we stand and say enough is enough for our people. Now, there's something I want to say. Our government is not happy matter. We cannot keep saying we're blaming the European Union, the European Union. Listen. Let us get it straight. We cannot say after 400 or something years that we have gone to school, we have right. traveled. That, let me say, for example, if I have something, have a girlfriend, and I have to send my girlfriend to go work outside to feed me, to pay my house rent, to close me and slave her, who am I? I'm an, the first animal created by God. Yeah. You so he's saying that the solution is is among us. Where do you? Where is the solution for you? Where is the solution the, the for you? Solu the solution. I believe that first of all, first of all, education is very very important. Education. Education. Two. 
legal pathways has to be opened because there are so legal many, pathways yes, of migration. Yes, of migration has to be open. This is where I blame the European Union. You see, many people they they applied for visa. They want a better they, life. Yes, they they applied for visa. I, they right. have this money. They are denied of visa. I, but there are many agents I, that right. can get these visas for I, them. At the end of the day, they will become victims I, I, of right. human trafficking. Right. Right. Well, I need I need a solution from I, Princess. I need a solution from you. Yeah, I can say that one of the solution is that we should train our young ones in the way of righteousness so that when they grow they will never become a victim or a cleanse that's number one then number two we need to go back to our own country in order to um, let's say collaborate with our government to issue us free education and also uh, give the youth opportunity to get right. job because most of the victims because they don't have free education and they don't get job we'll leave it there this has been the 77%. We've been talking about the fact that many young African women are on the streets of Italy day and night. We've, told, we've been told that they're not prostitutes, that they're slaves. We've heard some of the solutions. We're interested to know what you think. Get in touch with us via social media where the conversation continues.